Hi there, this is Chloe McCracken from Inner Whispers. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Everyday Witch Tarot, which is uh, written by Deborah Blake and with art by Elizabeth Alba. And you might be asking yourself, do I really need another witch tarot? Well, I have to say, that was kind of my thought too, and I have put off getting this. But then I saw some images that just made me think, hey, this looks fun, it looks playful, it doesn't have the same sort of robes, which I didn't really like in the Silver Witchcraft Tarot. It has a more balanced approach than in the Triple Goddess Tarot, which, okay, it isn't a witch tarot, but it kind of has that feel to it. Um, it's... <sighs> It's playful, you know, they wear those kind of silly witch black hats, but there's something kind of, yeah, playful and everyday about it, hence the name, I guess, and it just felt like it might be a good match, so let's take a look and see whether it lives up to that. So at first glance, Llewellyn have upgraded their packaging a little bit. This looks to be a magnetic flat box rather than just a kind of uh, very flimsy one. Let's dig on in. So I like the fun playful image on the front, which I'm guessing is the full card. And as I thought, it is a magnetic flat box. It's not a very strong, well, it's got that little. <laughs> and inside the book pulls out with a ribbon, Guide to the Everyday Witch. Um, ooh, okay, so colour images this way and that way. Already I think you can see the playfulness that I was talking about. Um, we have a section about the authors with pictures and full colour. So, introduction about the deck, how to do a reading, common questions and answers, some tarot extras, then the major arcana and the minor arcana taking up most of the space, and chapter four with the conclusion. I'm guessing that tarot extras, page 26, might be spread. So I can, oh, there's a spot for making notes about each one. So it's kind of, mm, almost like, yeah, with a notes section. I quite like that, that you could write your own notes into it. And as you can see, a full colour card image in each. And I really like the borders here as well, which I guess are going to be echoed in the cards. Well, we'll see. Uh, the chariot. So page 26, I think it was. for. So some tarot extras. Tarot spells for use with the tarot. Or well, three spells for use with the tarot. A consecration spell for new cards. Um, a cleansing spell for used cards and a spell for a good reading and there are no spreads included it would seem unless they're oh, at the back let's have a quick quick glance ah yes okay so here we have spreads the Celtic cross Deborah's version of it um, a three card spread and one card spread. Okay, so fairly basic, but as I say, there's a lot of nice stuff in here. Notes for a notes section for all the cards and the full colour. Let's have a look inside. So there's no box as such, it's just this indent in there. So if you want to keep it all together, I won't be. And the cards are borderless. Ooh. And the one I thought was the full isn't the full, so we'll see what it actually is. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so I'm going to have to hold these up a little bit to avoid glare. Sorry about that, but hopefully that will still stay nice and clear. We have the fool who looks rather jubilant. Um, the magician seems a bit older and wiser. Ditto for the High Priestess, with her various divination tools. Uh, typical sort of pregnant Empress. Lots of apples or whatever around. I don't know, I'm not sure I like her that much, but hey. <laughs> you don't have to like everyone. The Emperor, interesting. He has this kind of... Hmm. 
looks like it could be astrological kind of the pictures of the or else they're runes of some kind the Hierophant is a yoga teacher and the lovers kind of hand fasting cute little kitties so it's definitely got a playful feel to it here we have the chariot still riding around with her silly hat despite the leathers and uh, lovely strength I like that she's kind of is that that she's controlling the whirlwind while getting on with all of this some interesting things to think about the hermit taking some time sacred space for reflection <laughs> the wheel of fortune areas of your life justice <laughs> it's kind of peeking out from behind her blindfold, that's interesting, with the black and white kitty cats on there balancing out, and a book of law in her hand. Hmm. So there's some interesting symbolism, like the padlock chain of the hanged man hanging off a broom, padlocked here as well but holding the key, a masked death with another little black kitty cat. So I'm loving the black kitty cats, I have to say. Uh, temperance when I open, when I closed. Getting some balance. And there's cakes on one side and healthy food on the other. And the cat's got a cake, of course. The devil offering what you most desire. The tower, but she's still standing afterwards. Did she even knock it down? She's looking at us quite cheekily over her shoulder. Oh, a lovely star. <laughs> that has a bit of a magician feel in the sense that she's drawing it down from above and then giving it in. And she's not giving it to earth and water combined. So yeah, some interesting differences there as well as traditional. The moon, <laughs> the cat sees itself as a puma or a black leopard. And the sun, interestingly, has a kind of Three of Cups feel to it. I'm not sure about that. I mean, I guess, you know, there's enough that it's going to show through. Hmm. Ah, so it's Judgment who leads the way in a sort of Pied Piper style. Hmm. I like the cat with the butterfly. Um, so yes, definitely a kind of a calling you're being drawn to something and it's for your transformation and higher good. I can see that. And the world. Completion, being in your blissed out place. Yep. Ace of Swords. Interesting choice to have a person actually holding the sword. Um, two of Swords. That's funny and rather different. Uh, Yes, I'm not quite sure how that'll compare in readings. Very different kind of symbolism. This idea of, <clears throat> you've already hit one bullseye, can you hit another? Doing it all blindfolded. A lot going on there. Uh, beautiful, I love journaling with the Three of Swords, so yeah, that works for me really nicely. And the Four of Swords, fairly traditional. There's a lot of cobwebs though. I guess she's been asleep for a long time. It takes a lot of preparation. Five of swords. Okay. She's taken their athames with her spell. Six of swords. Moving on via a broomstick and via air rather than water. It's interesting because the air element, of course, is the element of swords, and yet having that emotional side to it, I guess you have that a little bit with the moon being there. So while the rider weight sort of basis of this is very clear, it is taking things in quite a different direction. This one's a bit more traditional, but I really like the books there. I often see this as a card of research, gathering ideas. Um, and, you know, so long as you quote them, then it's not plagiarism, it's not theft. It's building on the ideas that are around. A nice Eight of Swords. 
And I of course love the fact that there's a black kitty cat in just about all the cards. Ooh, interesting nine of swords, the way the swords are pointing and the dawn is rising. So it's, yes. well, you know, she's been reading all night and no wonder her thoughts are whirring. And the ten of swords can't quite reach her broom. Page of swords, an interesting perspective. More and more decks seem to be doing this, kind of taking a slightly different angle on these things. The Knight of Swords charging in on his broom. A lovely Queen of Swords. She has a mature wisdom to her, but still a, a gentleness. I like that. And the King of Swords. Also wise, scholarly. Ace of Cups. So the Ace is the person is there just very straight up. I like that there's this sort of, the cup is nurturing and helping things to blossom and she also has a cauldron there. Two of cups for relationship, three of cups dancing in the moonlight together. So quite different to the sun card, uh, they won't be hard to distinguish at least. Four of cups, troubled emotions. Five of cups, oh wow what a banquet she's got there that she's just not seeing. Six of Cups. <laughs> These are fun options that she's got inside her cups. And Eight of Cups, very traditional, works nicely. The only thing that's kind of missing is a, a mountain for her to climb. There's a mountain on the other side and not the way that she's walking. But hey, maybe she needs to go with the flow of the river. That works quite nicely too. Uh, the Nine of Cups. I like the cat playing with the crab. Uh, hmm. And the Ten of Cups. Full on family thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun page of cups. Interesting that it's sort of artistic and creative. Um, I guess emotion is often expressed that way. <laughs> and hilarious heart bubbles from the Knight of Cups. Uh, a younger, more Aphrodite-esque Queen of Cups, and she seems pregnant as well. Letting her cat sit on her throne. And the King of Cups. Nicely mature. It's perspective on what he's seeing. The Ace of Wands. Great deal of creativity here. Two of Wands. Very traditional, looking out from the battlements. Fun little salamander and the cats. So the little salamander seems to be going everywhere in the one suit, three of wands. Oh, she's, is she doing weather magic to bring the boats in? Hmm. And four of wands. So in terms of it being every day, I mean, you know, they're wearing kind of Renaissance clothes and the silly hats a lot of the time. And yet a lot of it is things that I can relate to quite easily. Um, it definitely does have a playful feel. The colours are vibrant and uh, symbolically interesting, like you know, the funny stripy tights and yet here they're red for instance as opposed to being blue in the cups or what have you. And eight of ones, things are moving fast, she looks a little out of her depth whirlwind. Definitely feeling battered now, but she's making a stand and resting up against a tree to support her. I like that symbolism too. And she's carrying brooms instead of wands. That's heavy. The page of wands. Paths to follow. The knight of wands. Chasing dragons. Queen of wands made her peace with her dragon and the king of wands seeing the whole world but still happy with his kitty cat then we have the ace of pentacles nice green colors here beautiful balance for the two standing on a kind of seesaw thing the cat's gonna tip you over that's life <laughs> 
The Three of Pentacles. Hmm, very interesting. Very different pentacles and yeah, what does that mean? Is it to do with the suits, the elements? And the Four of Pentacles locked in. Five of Pentacles, hard times, but traversing it together. So yes, this very traditional symbolism, yet done in quite a fun and playful way. Six of Pentacles, giving to young and old. Uh, Seven of Pentacles, a beautiful harvest. Takes, takes time to make wine, that's for sure. Eight of Pentacles, a, a splodge of this, a dash of that, and then finally the potions will come right. <laughs> And Nine of Pentacles, sit back and enjoy it. And the Ten of Pentacles, lovely legacy card. Page of Pentacles, interesting that he's flipping a coin here and there. Choices, I'd see the Page of Pentacles as being a little more practical than that, but hey, I guess that's also letting spirit intervene and guide you. The Knight of Pentacles, fairly dynamic for a Knight of Pentacles chap. And the Queen of Pentacles, very beautiful. Grey haired once again, like the Queen of Swords, but lots of abundance around, and I like that there's the little moon in her hair as well. For me, Pentacles, you know, it's the reminder that it is also a suit of being connected with spirit through the body. And the King of Pentacles with chocolate cake. Okay. Right, so, as I say, quite a playful deck, colourful deck. The suits work nicely together colour-wise. Um, the cards are easy to hold in a single hand. They feel a little smidge flimsy um, and absolutely non-reversible backs, if that's something that you are concerned about. Um, but they do shuffle easily very easily and let's give them a little riffle so they also riffle very smoothly overall they feel good they have a sort of plastification so I think they'll still be durable even though they are a little on the flimsy side um, time will tell <laughs> Lovely. Nine of Pentacles. Take some time to enjoy yourself this week. Look back on what you've achieved and just enjoy life. Sage advice. Blessed be.